Hey everybody, welcome back. So I'm right in the middle of this build for the Harbor Freight Bower Portable Bandsaw to make a stand to turn it into an upright saw and then an attachment that'll turn the whole thing into a chop saw. And I thought this might be a really good time since everything's fresh in my mind to stop and do a review of something else I've acquired recently. And that's this new welding hood by Yes Welder. Somebody gave this to me for my birthday a couple weeks ago. I used it throughout the test for the Simder Arc 200 stick welder and I've used it to, to do the welds and tacks while I've made this stand and chop saw attachment. And it is a considerable upgrade and I thought this would be a good time to talk about it, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and whether I think it's a welding hood that you might like. Now, Yes Welder doesn't know me from Adam. They don't know I'm making this review. They have nothing to do with it. And I'm not a guy anymore who spends eight hours a day with a welding hood on his head. So I can't tell you how comfortable it is if you wear it eight hours straight. I also, since I've only had it a few weeks, I can't give you a durability review of it. We'll have to come back, you know, a year from now and do that. But um, I can tell you what I found that I kind of think can be improved and what I have found that I really like. So I'm going to reposition the camera and we'll get it up on the bench where you can get a closer look at it. And I'll put a link to it in Amazon below and let's, um, let's talk about it for a bit. Okay, so this is the original box that came in. I hung on to it just because I knew I was probably going to make this video. This is the Yes Welder LGY-Q800D-CP. Again, Q800D-CP, and of course it is made in China. And the CP stands for Cyberpunk, and that is the paint scheme decal they put on it. They make these in a, a variety of different paint color schemes. And um, I think this one happened to be on sale at the time, which is why they got it. This hood normally sells for about 100 bucks, And I think they hit a 15 or 20% off coupon just for this particular color scheme. I'm not particularly into skulls. But honestly, after looking at their other color schemes, this one probably, to me, is the least offensive. And I like the colors. Not into skulls, though. But anyway, let's open the box and let's see what other stuff it comes with. It came with a bag to put it in, a big bag that says Yes Welder on it. And you can put that in there. It's got a drawstring, and it's kind of weird the drawstring hooks to the bottom. I'm not exactly, I've never seen a drawstring bag that the drawstring connected through the bottom. I don't know whether that's to turn it into a backpack or what. It's weird. It decent quality bag, you know, and if it's something you're not if you're not going to use your hood for a while, you put it in the bag, it keeps it from getting dusty and dirty and that kind of crap. It comes with an extra one of the front shields, which is nice. It comes with a little manual, which I haven't even opened to be quite frank. And it comes with an extra couple of the, one extra of the other shields and an extra battery. So, that's what it comes with. So, it seems to be really quite durable. The material, if you see my old Harbor Freight welding hood, and this is no in no way, shape, or form a fair comparison. This was a $35 hood. This is a $100 hood. So, but it is quite a bit thicker in material. It's quite a bit bigger behind it from side to side, which for my great big head, and I also wear glasses, I found that to be useful. The viewing area is far, far larger. The colors and decals are much nicer. Now, Harbor Freight makes a $100 welding hood, which is probably about comparable to this Yes Welder hood. But that's not what I have from the Harbor Freight I have. They're super cheapy. But so far, I like the body of it. The headgear has this nice thing that goes around the back. I've already got it all filthy and covered with hair. But it's got this nice thing that goes around the back. The back band seems to work really well. I um, I kind of wish it locked, but um, it doesn't, and that's okay. It's got adjustments at the top. Spin it around. It's got adjustments at the top for the top of your head height, and it has adjustments for the back band as well. So far, I really haven't found much that I dislike about the headgear. 
I'm not sure 100% that I have it adjusted right yet, but I've got it adjusted so it does come down far enough, and but not so far that it hits my nose. Those adjustments are over here. You can just kind of bend that out, and then you slide that around and put it in a different peg. It's all plastic. I suspect they're all, all plastic. So how long that is going to last if you use it a bunch and you go up and down with it a whole lot every day, I don't know. Um, the good news is this entire headgear part is only like 12 bucks. So if you bust it, you can replace it. Inside, I don't know if I can adjust this, flip this around so you can actually see inside of it. But inside, it's got a test button where you can press, press it and it will darken it for you. It's got a weld, cut, and grind setting, which I have found to be actually quite useful. It's got a sensitivity setting, a delay setting, and then it's got some place to put the battery. And I have not had this part, this inner thing apart yet. I've had the headgear apart because I backed it off so far it fell apart. And then I had to take the other side apart in order to figure out how to put the first side back together, if that makes sense. The adjustment for the tension of the headgear seems to work fine. It's got kind of a bumpy, and it's auto, they did it on purpose so that when it goes up and down, it kind of has little bumps that it, you kind of feel, it's not like a real detent, but um, I guess it kind of helps it not go up and down too easily. The headgear, I think, is okay. At least for me, it's comfortable. I've had no issues with it. A lot of adjustments, so getting it adjusted will take you a while. That, I think, is fine. I think all the settings on the inside are fine for the um, cut, grind, weld, and the different sensitivities. If you turn the sensitivity all the way down to low, it will flash you. You will flash yourself with it. And that's kind of, um, I don't know if it should be able to go that low or not, but it will. All the way up, um... It's so sensitive that if you look up at the lights and the ceiling, it will darken it. So that that's a really broad range of sensitivity, which I guess is good. Delay, I haven't really messed with. Delay is how long it takes before it lightens back up again. It's set all the way to minimum, and I honestly, I haven't felt any need to change that. I've used the test button. I know that works, but I haven't taken it apart to change the battery or anything like that. One thing I do like... And I don't know if you can see it, it has these side panels in here. And these side panels don't lighten and darken. They're like about a number five green gas welding lens. If you've ever done any gas welding, you remember the old green, number five green gas welding lenses. That's what those are like. At first I thought, well, that's pretty useless. But to be honest with you, you get your head in an odd position and it's nice to be able to look out that side lens. I have found that to actually be useful and I like it. Like I say, I haven't taken this main thing apart yet in here. I'm hoping that it's not a big deal. Um, it doesn't seem to have a separate lens to protect the inside. I know I always used to put that inside and outside protective clear lenses on mine. Um, on the outside, this outside is really nice. I've got it all dusty from using it. Let me grab a quick cloth and clean it off. This is the one I've been using for that. It's already pretty filthy. Um, but as you can see, it has a very large viewing area. It's got a solar panel at the top, so it does have some solar. I don't know, and honestly, I don't know whether that solar is just what collects the light or whether that solar attempts to recharge the battery. I, I honestly don't know. I never even thought about that till just this minute. I'll have to look that up. And then on the outside, you also have the adjustment for the, the shade. And this is where my first real bone to pick with this comes in. And if you've watched my videos for the welders, you've known one of my bones I pick with them is dials and controls that move so easy that all you have to do is toss your gloves at it and hit it and you've changed it. I have to make sure I had checked this every time before I put the hood on. If I use this hood in a real welding environment, I would find some way to keep that from turning so easily. Maybe pull the knob off and put a couple O-rings under it. Um, maybe just squirt some silicone under it, you know, and pull it off and put some silicone under it so it has something to rub against. I don't know, but I would find a way to do it 
because if I start well, if I take this thing off and set it down, next time I go, I'm probably doing it with my hand when I put it on, it will not be where I left it. So that's a real bone to pick with me. If any of you welding manufacturer people are watching this, good God, please put some click stops on it. They're probably going to have to be more than just 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They probably should be 9, 9.5, 10, 10.5, 10 and so on. But um, they really need to be there. And I don't know whether this is a decal. It's not a paint job, so I'm guessing it's one kind of a decal. You can see I've already got a good, nice burn spot here on it. Um, so I'm not sure you know, exactly how durable that's going to be. I'm not even sure how I did that. But... Um, that doesn't make me very happy, but you know what? That's the life of a welding hood. It's going to get burned. No way out of it. The front the front lens thing, you take off via these hooks. Like I say, I've never done it, so I don't know how much fun it is to do. I'm sure the manual probably tells me how to do it. But um, i got to tell you, welding with this, the view is very, very good. The it's It's a true color lens, I believe. But it certainly looks far better than the old Harbor Freight, you know, with the greenish lens. I like the side panels. I like the headgear and the adjustability of it. It seems to be working really, really well for me. Um, actually, even despite the fact that it's got skulls on it, I actually even like the color scheme. Um, not that that makes much of a difference. I like the big wraparound front. I really like the side panels. So... I guess my only real complaint with it so far has been how easy that turns. And um, as soon as I get over my fear of trying to pull that button off and possibly breaking something, I'll see if I can't find some way to make that turn a little bit, a little bit harder so there's some resistance to it. But anyway, I'll put a link to this below. I really like it. I think it's a good hood. I don't know how it compares to other hoods at $100. Um... It might be better, it might be worse, and they might all be the same. But um, those are the things I really like about it, and the one thing I kind of don't like about it. Anyway, I'm going to get back to building this portable bandsaw, stand, chop saw thing. And I have something else I picked up in the middle to do this, and I'll probably do a review on that as well. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.